and welcome to Golf News Straight Bat. So, after both of yesterday's games were washed out by the rain, luckily we've got some action today. There was only one match today. It was Sri Lanka against uh, New Zealand in Sydney. And uh, New Zealand won by 65 runs. It was a thrashing of the uh, highest order. Sham, what are your thoughts on what you've just seen? I mean, it's, it's, it's a pathetic performance by Sri Lanka, I would say, more than, uh, more than what New Zealand won. I would say Sri Lanka lost the game here. Yeah. Uh, simply because uh, right from the beginning, uh, Sri Lanka had the upper hand and they just threw it away. See, you look at the pair power play, Sri Lanka were 15 for 3. And then the, they, they, they allowed New Zealand to rack up something like 167, which uh, didn't look like uh, probably at the point. Not just that, on the way, Glenn Phillips got the second uh, century of the tournament, that is 104, but Glenn Phillips was dropped twice. One of them is school boys sitter, actually, and very early in the inning, actually. So, uh, actually, that uh, that turn, that ball, that catch could be the turn, or the, rather the drop catch could be the turning point of the match. And when Sri Lanka batted, I mean, again, they, it was very amateurish performance from them. I mean, uh, having seen them in Asia Cup in the UAE, I mean, I just couldn't believe it is the same team is playing because they were uh, running around like headless chickens or rather lemmings out of the sea, really. So uh, they were eight for four pretty early with uh, with uh, Trent Bolt taking three wickets and so they uh, won. And uh, soon it fell pen down to 65 for eight and it was only a matter of time. Only I can see only the only guys who did well was Rajapaksa got 34 and uh, Sanaga got 35. If it was not for that, they would have finished well under 50. I mean, I mean, all in all, a very pathetic performance from Sri Lanka. I think I, I'm, I'm, uh, the worst part is I'm sure this this very team is capable of much more, which they have shown us in the Asia Cup. And here they have put in a spineless performance. Very disappointing. So, Thief, some strong words there from Sham. He's clearly very disappointed from the performance from Sri Lanka. I, I am equally agree? disappointed, Imran. Yeah. I am equally <laughs> disappointed by the performance after watching what happened? What went wrong for them, Satish? Um, to be honest, if you look at I would squarely blame this on the skipper, Dashun Shanaka, number one. And, of course, the catching, yes. Uh, that uh, one catch need not be the, you know, like the turning point. When things were going his way, uh, Shanaka made some changes which were, uh, you know, like I don't think even a club cricketer would make those changes at the time when uh, you are dominating. The moment after the seventh over, when the when the catch was dropped of Phillips, Sri Lanka went on the defensive to, you know, like the bowling length altered. They were not bowling onto the stumps. They were literally trying to restrict Sri Lanka, uh, New Zealand, then attack and get wickets. If you look at the first three wickets, or uh, the the two of them were uh, straight on the, the stumps and the. Third one was beautifully set up uh, for uh, Williamson to uh, play uh, that uh, extravagant cover drive, which was caught behind. So these uh, one number one captaincy, which was you no know, like uh, I think uh, Sri Lanka need to look beyond uh, Shanaka because he has not been an inspiring captain so far, and some of the decisions which he made was uh, literally pathetic. And number two, the fielding was horrendous, and this is not the first time in this uh, uh, tournament I've been seeing them. Uh, fielding pretty badly and it was actually their fielding that won the match uh, in the Asia Cup final. But on the contrary, in the World Cup, the fielding is absolutely nowhere near an international standard and New Zealand could get so many extra singles because of misfield. You're not running, you know, like I would say, these are big grounds, you can take, convert ones into twos. Uh, actually, when you look at, uh, in contrast, when New Zealand were fielding, it seemed like the uh, ground has shrunk. They were not able to take a single nor a double. <laughs> okay, look, let's let's have a recap, guys. Let's start from the beginning. Um, so Kane Williamson, uh, he won the toss, and he decided to have a bat first on what looked like a pretty decent pitch. And you can't blame him after the way they played against Australia in that last game. They scored two hundred runs, so confidence was very high. But then they lost uh, Finn Allen for one run, and then uh, Conway, who got ninety-two against Australia, also went for just one run. And uh, Williamson, he, he was, he, I think he just got eight. He, he failed yeah. to, uh, to fire. So it was a very sloppy start from uh, uh, New Zealand, losing those three wickets and those uh, first four overs. Sham, at the end of that power play, Sri Lanka would have been feeling quite pleased with their uh, opening, with the way they started. Absolutely, they were pleased, but they, uh, they didn't build on it. 
you look at the see what what you have to be uh, aware here is this is sydney sydney is one australian ground where spinners come into play and the way thikshna bowled in those initial overs it was uh, it, i mean uh, he, he uh, i mean he, he was very very effective not just that when tanjay came with this uh, tanjay is not a not a full fledged all spinner he is a all spinning all rounder actually but he he even he got uh, some uh, help uh, help and he had them uh, the you know, the kiwis at bay so sadly tanjay despite uh, those early two overs he bowled only those two overs he was never brought on again i, I think at that point uh uh shanaka like uh, sadish said turned to the uh, pace bowlers and that actually played right into glen slips hand and it's see new zealand is a play, is a side who is brought up on a uh, on a diet of medium pace bowlers back home so this is canon for up for them so uh, philip just feasted on it it was a match winning knock he got uh, 10 boundaries he got four sixes on his way to 104 but sharp like you say he was dropped on 12 and dropped on 45 I mean you just take away you know <laughs> this guy's innings and uh, it would have been a pretty equal game because I mean he was the only one who fired for New Zealand today Absolutely So Tish how impressed were you with that uh, with that performance from Phillips today Brilliant because uh, he see two things one Phillips generally doesn't come up so early but the moment they lost three wickets Kane Williamson being the shrewd captain he is Uh, I think after the second wicket, he brought Phillips on as, uh, when he was there as well. But despite being a hard hitter, a power hitter, Phillips took his time to build on the innings. It's not a wicket where you can come and play those shots initially. This is exactly where Sri Lankans failed. They should have seen how he was building the innings despite being a power hitter. He was getting those ones, twos, and odd boundaries here and there, and that's how he was building the innings. Sri Lankans didn't do that. So, if you take that 104 runs of 163, uh, I think uh, his knock itself is enough for uh, Sri Lanka today. To be honest, uh, to they say that they were two runs short of his own total, so that's <laughs> that's a uh, impact that in innings had. Oh, what Huge a knock! Impact. He played. He took his time, and he was he was actually he was playing a very calculated knock, which was the key in 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 this game, which should give him plenty of confidence going forward because it was not a Uh, uh, power hitting uh, shot uh, knock like what Stoinis did the other day, but here he was very methodical in his approach, and even somebody like uh, uh, th this guy uh, Daryl Mitchell, who's a very good batsman, he was not able to get his shots right, so he was actually struggling a bit. He, I think he got about twenty two of twenty four balls or something like that. So that is the difficult uh, nature of the pitch, but here this man waited for his chance and. he picked his uh, areas and when the fast bowlers came in he, he thrashed them and when tikshana came in for the uh, final spell he literally you know like he utilized his skills and got some good runs uh, straight through the field A brilliant knock brilliant. be so bad in the field today uh i can't put a finger on it but i can i i look at the, the number of catches they dropped they dropped eight catches in the world cup so far which is a sad commentary on their fielding actually uh see they are not a bad fielding side but i think there is something missing this i think this is more than just the game awareness or the or the passion or commitment there's something more drastic i, I think something more rad something a bigger reason should could be there because i mean you just don't uh, turn up like this you, this is a world cup and this is the ultimate stage the biggest stage on the world and if this doesn't inspire you what will and i i satish was very clear when he said about the captaincy of darshan sanaga i have watched darshan sanaga in uh, in the asia cup i watched i listened to him in now uh, in the press conferences uh, i should say that i was least impressed with his uh, with him as a person in the sense like he's a very very nice person very po polite to a fault wonderful guy as a person but i i i for i suspect as a captain he might lack the steel or, or or the ruthlessness to go for the jugular which is why you see you had 
New Zealand on the mat, 15 for three. Why would you take your gas off the pedal? I mean, this is precisely what Shanaga did today. Not just that, when the team is, uh, when, the, when the shoulders are sagging, it's up to a captain to lift them. I doubt whether Shanaga has it in him. He's the kind of, a, he came across as an introvert, more reticent kind of character. But uh, to me, that kind of people hardly and uh, rarely make good leaders. I think that the, that could partly be uh, the Sri Lanka's problem. Satish, do you agree with that? Do you think he's too meek and too uh, weak to be? He, a he's, he's too nice a guy. Uh, uh, see, uh, Williamson is also a nice guy, but he's ruthless when he comes as a captain. He pulls out the best punches. Just to give it in contrast, Bolt was Bolt bowled three overs on the trot within the power play. So he is his main bowler. So that's how you need to go and attack the opposition ruthlessly to, to win. Because here you give a little inch, the opposition is gone. They will run away with the match. That's exactly what has happened today uh, in terms of uh, New Zealand winning. And but Sri Lanka, they need, to, they deserve the credit for playing the game very well in the first six power play overs. But after that, they let uh, 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 New Zealand slip away from their fingers, right through their fingers. Uh, so, even Satish, just as an extension to what Satish was saying, uh, you take away Glenn Phillips' ma uh, match-winning knock. I would say it's actually it was it was a tactical battle won hands down by Kane Williamson. I would I would put it that way. Yeah, absolutely, Sean. Mm. And Satish, you mentioned uh, Trent Bolt just there. He did superb. He got uh, four wickets for thirteen runs. He was he was unplayable, wasn't he today? Uh, Imran, he's, he's, it's not that he is unplayable. In T20, he knows us exactly what to do. He will play with the batsman's mind. He will not give you any free hits. Uh, the first ball, he gave a wide ball where it was hit. And then they thought maybe you know, like they can go after it. And then he pulled back the line and he came back into the stumps. And then you, if you go after him, you are in trouble. The, the best way to approach uh, Trent Boulder, that even India found out uh, last time in the, in the uh, one-day World Cup. They went after him and they suddenly uh, four wickets were gone in the uh, uh, semi-final. So, that's the way he approaches. He, he, he teases the batsman. He alters his length. He varies his pace. He changes the direction. He's a wonderful bowler. He doesn't have the pace now, but he plays with the batsman's mind and he gets them uh, make a, dig their own grave, literally. You no, know, like he gives you those long hops where you, know, like you see that the ball, oh yeah, he'll go for a six and he'll, the ball will be a sky. So then He's that's how he the plays batsman. on that. He teases the batsman and he gets their yeah. wicket and he, he enjoys that. <laughs> and he's and disciplined disciplined quick, huh? yeah. he, If he wants and to be quick, he can uh, be quick, but he's not doing that these yeah. days. Yeah. Sorry, Imran, go for it. Sorry, yeah. In your uh, in your live commentary, you were saying it would have been quite difficult for uh, Nisanka to uh, get his mind back on the batting after that terrible dropped catch. Absolutely. I mean, uh, Absolutely. That's, that's exactly where... The captain plays a role. The coach plays a role, saying that what's gone is gone. You forget about it and play the game, and then you need to give that confidence so that they forget about what happened in the uh, on the field. Actually, if you look at the way Sri Lankans approach, that they were hit hardly by the fielding lapses, and that's where they came back, and then that's the way they approached their batting. They, there was no uh, sanity in their mind. There was no clarity in their mind. They were just. Going, uh, you know, like uh, uh, trying to get those runs in 10 overs, maybe. No, you can't do that. You need to play the game. See what uh, Kohli and uh, uh, Pandya did against uh, 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 Pakistan. What uh, Zimbabwe did. So, you need to play these tactical games. T20 is way beyond these power hitting and coming and slam bank cricket. T20 has evolved into such a nice game these days. The bowlers will have you for breakfast if you go after them three consecutive deliveries. That's exactly where Rajapaksa uh, uh, lost his wicket. He went to twice over the infield to hit Ferguson. And the third ball, he got him out. So, that's that's the way the bowlers get. They are very smart these days. They, but there is no chance. They have to, to survive. They need to come up with all these uh, uh, variations and changes of pace and the back of length. Uh, uh, They'll keep you guessing all the time. Okay, let's uh, let uh, uh, let's uh, Sham have the last word on Sri Lanka. Sham, after what you've seen of them today, do you think they can make it to the semi-final stage of the World Cup? 
no, I don't, I, no, 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 not at all. I don't, I would, I would give them a chance there, really, because uh, they're in a, actually in a strong group with uh, uh, England, Australia, and New Zealand, and I, I don't fancy Ireland, chance at Ireland, also, all. Sean, Ireland has beaten England. Yeah, I, yeah Ireland, <laughs> yes, don't forget Ireland. They're they are on Ireland. the side. Yes, but in this format, they can be really giant killers as they have shown like the, twice in this tournament. So, uh, which means uh, the, I, I would I would the Ireland might even top uh, Sri Lanka in the in the in the table in the, if it comes to that. But today, uh, by on the strength of today, Sri Lanka's display, no chance at all. Yeah, but uh, had they won today, they would have probably gone to yeah. four points, which would have enhanced their chances. Uh, of no, like because if with the rain uh, intervention, rain effect, uh, the thing, uh, point split, uh, split points, all this put together, it could have helped them if they had won it today, but if, not anymore. Yeah, if they had won, if they had won, we would have, we'd have an interesting battle for the top two slots from that group one. But well, unfortunately, they, they lost, they lost badly. So, I mean, I, I would write them off completely from, from this World Cup. Okay, so Sri Lanka have been written off by the guys. Let's move on to uh, tomorrow's games. Uh, it's been confirmed uh, for ahead of India's uh, third Super 12 match against South Africa that KL Rahul will open the batting. Uh, now, in the wins against the Netherlands and Pakistan, he's only managed to get 13 runs so far. Charm, is that the right thing to do, to stick with uh, Rahul, or would you have given uh, Rishabh Pan the chance to, uh, to open the batting tomorrow? No, I would stick with uh, KL Rahul. See, it he, has been a decision which has been made by the team even uh, uh, right from the tour of South Africa. So they have given him ample time to run into form and to change, the, uh, say, two more two matches into the World Cup, I wouldn't say it's a good move. Uh, I would give him one more chance before uh, before I, uh, I decide to change the, uh, the opening pair. But I think Rahul deserves one more chance. Satish, he's only averaging six point five. What would you do? Would you? Would you? Uh, actually, actually, if you, if, you, if you ask me, like uh, uh, the match against South Africa uh, in Perth uh, will actually uh, work in his favor for the simple reason uh, he likes the ball come on to the bat nicely. In the last two games, it was not so much of a quickies because Pakistan bowlers were you no know, like they are, uh, they can swing the ball well, but whereas South African bowlers they can hit the deck harder. So. These kind of bowlers, he might like it. Uh, so, and Netherlands, uh, they also swing the ball. So, he doesn't like the ball moving ball. Generally, none of the batsmen like the ball to move around. <laughs> uh, let's face it. <laughs> yeah. But here, the South African bowlers come and hit the deck hard. Nokia and all that, they will, he, he'll come and hit the bat harder. So, I'm sure uh, he's, he's in for a big run. That's my gut feeling. I'm sure he'll get some runs tomorrow. It's you better think, to uh, stick with him. You think India will win tomorrow? Uh, yes, I, I think they will for the simple reason they have uh, the all-round team, whereas uh, South Africa is yet to still uh, be tested, basically. Like uh, against Zimbabwe, uh, it was a rain-affected game. The second game was also, I think, uh, 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 it was rain-affected. Uh, isn't, isn't it right? Uh, like, uh, uh, and then, uh, yeah, I think they, 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 it was yeah. rain-affected against uh, South Afghanistan, I think, if I remember right. Or is this the third game for them? Uh, and Sean, what do you think? You think uh, an India win tomorrow? I hope so, uh, but it's going to be a tight game because if you look at South Africa's last uh, performance, they would take a lot of confidence from that. From that, and uh, Quinton Decock is in an amazing form, and Riley Russo's uh, hundred. And I remember that uh, Russo had two has scored two T Twenty international hundreds in a row, and uh, the uh, the he. Uh, the the previous one was uh, against was, India. Was against India yeah. during the India tour. Yes, yes, that is that is the last. That is the third third of the T Twenty internationals in India. So so from there he's called, gone on to score two two in a row. So which means I would say Russo is the man which India has to fear because he he knows the bowling. But of course this is this is a different set of wicket here. This is Perth. Perth is again the fastest wicket, and also India's bowling has so far has shown that. Our Australian wickets, they can be quite a handful. So I would say it's almost, uh, I would say, 60-40 uh, in favour of India. Same here. Okay, okay. Let's have a, Perfect jump. <laughs> let's have a quick word on Bangladesh against Zimbabwe. No, we know that uh, Zimbabwe are fresh from their uh, stunning uh, upset of Pakistan. Satish, how do you see that one going tomorrow? 
Uh, actually, if you look at in the previous uh, uh, three match uh, uh, series in uh, South in Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe has beaten Bangladesh. This Bangladesh is a team that is in the rebuilding process. So I would still give Zimbabwe the chance because they have the, the confidence going into this game because beating Pakistan is no mean effort. And then uh, they did everything well. But the, the di difficulty is, or rather the, uh, the, the problem is, for Zimbabwe, it's maybe one or two men who need to stand up. If they don't do, they don't perform. If things don't happen the way it should have, then they might be in trouble. So, in that sense, I would I would say Bangladesh is a, is my uh, pick. Oh, that's a surprise. And Sham, what do you think? Do you think Bangladesh or Zimbabwe following that? Uh, uh... It's a tight match. It's again at the, it'll be a too close to call here. But I would. Uh... Uh, give uh, Zimbabwe 55 45. 55 45, okay. <laughs> Very close. And the third game of tomorrow is uh, uh, Pakistan are playing against Netherlands. We know that they've lost their two games now and they're relying on other teams to, uh, <laughs> to help them out. Generally speaking, are we going to see Pakistan in the semi finals, Sham? Uh, tough, really, because uh, if we, uh, it actually completely depends on how the South Africa Pakistan match. I, I would think the key to the second slot, because it looks like India might go through if India wins South Africa, beat South Africa tomorrow, then India is, would have pretty much sealed up the uh, mm. one slot from Six the two. Points. Then the second second one will, will be between South Africa and Pakistan. So, and to me, that will hinge on the South Africa match with Pakistan. So Pakistan's, uh, Pakistan also would want to beat India to beat uh, South Africa. Only then their, their, their exactly. stock would go up. So, which means Pakistan will have to win all their matches and also uh, also want the other results to go their way in the sense that they would want South Africa to lose at least one match. Satish, and, Pakistan have lost both the matches by one run. I mean, I, uh, I think tomorrow, I think tomorrow they'll come out all guns blazing, and they will. I'm sure they will produce an authoritative win tomorrow because this Pakistan side has got is too good actually. Uh, how they lost those two games. Is still uh, anybody's guess, and that too against Zimbabwe. Uh, I'm sure they will come out all, all guns blazing, and then they will uh, uh, easily, uh, uh, probably they'll score a thumping win over Netherlands. That's how they must be aiming for because that will improve their run rate. But it all depends on tomorrow's match between India and South Africa. If India lose to South Africa, then their chances become very minimal because. Then South Africa would be five points, and India would be four with three, uh, three matches. On I think India needs to play uh, uh, Bangladesh and uh, Zimbabwe in the next two games. So even if India could win one match from there, India would go to six points, and then uh, Pakistan need to beat South Africa and get a better run rate. All that will come into play. So it it becomes extremely difficult. So if South Africa or Pakistan win in that game, then uh, one of them will go down as well. So, um, if India win tomorrow, then it uh, Pakistan are pretty much in the running, and I'm sure they will make it. That's my gut feeling because they will come out trumps against South Africa. I can oh, guarantee you one thing. I can guarantee you one thing. Tomorrow, Ashford will be rooting for India against South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you will be. Yeah. Be very I will also root some because this we we need this Pakistan team to come in the semifinals. Only then the. Charm is there. Like they are very good side. They are excellent side. The way they they played both the games. Yes, uh, the middle order is still a bit of a suspect, but yes, uh, uh, that's that's the area they are rebuilding right now. So it it it's it's okay. Okay, so it's going to be a big day uh, tomorrow. That's uh, all for us for today. Head to golfnews.com for the latest news, reviews, analysis, videos, and much more. And uh, don't forget to check us out on our social media channels for more great content. Thanks to my guests and we'll see you again soon.